Hey, hello everyone. Um, my name is Joe Volpe. As you just heard, this is the last session before lunch. So just hang in there a little bit longer. Gonna go through a couple slides as backdrop and then we're gonna get a panel out here uh, pretty quickly. So we're here today to talk to you a little bit about supply chain transformation in healthcare. Uh, last time I was here, I did a little bit of a dive in some of the companies. We're actually gonna bring some of the companies out here and some other folks that are working in this space. Bill showed you this. It's the same exact forward thinking. I don't need to cover this. We're gonna make up some time here. He also showed you this, um, but I'm gonna use this slide as a chance to introduce myself. Um, as you heard, I work with the Growth Health Innovation Fund at Merck. I specifically look at supply chain IT, data analytics, AI, sensors, all those kinds of areas on behalf of Merck. Um, one of the companies that we're invested in is gonna be on the panel. Uh, and I'm gonna take you through some um, of our thinking first, and then we're gonna get their thinking uh, as they approach us on the panel. So our challenges, I showed this slide last time in the, in the spring summer summit, um, and it's complex. And I wanted to bring it back again, just in case folks didn't, didn't have a chance to see it. Um, there is another presentation on the HitLab uh, YouTube site that has mo some more detail around this. Uh, so this is our challenge. It starts from raw materials coming in on the left, packaging and bulk drug product in the middle, and then distribution of the finished products going out. That is a very complex environment. There's a lot of substance coming in. There's a lot of shipping from different vendors. There's a lot of manufacturing organizations. There's a lot of quality checking, uh, et cetera. What we started to do is really get together that bottom chevron there uh, in terms of, of needs that we needed to kind of get to for a digital twin to actually happen at, at Merck. So going across, data connectivity was key, and you're gonna we're gonna hear some things about that in a second. Um, track and trace, we actually invested in a track and trace company, uh, and I'm talking down to the product, down to the box, down to the temperature, down to the humidity, et cetera. So we're, we're getting deep into that. Real-time conditionings, proactive alerts, real-time intervention, all those things are where we're going. Are we there yet? We're getting there, and we're making some strides. Our businesses are looking at that. Sustainability tracking, you've heard that term. I'm probably tired of hearing that term. We're actually tracking that now. We're tracking it and looking at it on a real-time basis. So we'll talk to that as well. And then digital twin, that, that definition um, in itself, I'm gonna get to. But as you look across here, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. You got geopolitics happening, you have strikes, you have COVID, you have uh, weather, um, you, you might have security issues or counterfeiting. So we embark in a lot of, of, of issues as this kind of unfolds. And I also wanna say that this is a pharma end to end value chain. This could be Dell's or it could be you know, other industries. It's the same problem and the same type of interventions and monitoring needs that you need. So, a lot of what we're looking at, we're leveraging what's out there if possible. So <clears throat> these are some of the companies um, that we've invested in. Transvoid, you're gonna hear from, uh, that we call them our control tower or control center, uh, kind of like the control tower at an airport, but it monitors all our, um, all our distribution and shipments. Aerosafe is a cold chain packaging company as a service. So everything, not everything, but a lot of things we ship needs to be at a certain temperature. Um, certain humidity, et cetera, we real-time uh, look at that. And then Tag and Track is another company I mentioned, sensors. Um, they're almost like a tear-off sensor. They're, the sensors are getting phenomenal now um, where they're where tear-off stick on and they're cellular in nature and can, and can track things real-time. Uh, and they have other sensors as well. So just give you an example, Transvoid's here today and you're gonna hear from Dennis Gross close um, in a second. So digital twins. <coughs> I, um, I don't like reading definitions, but I, I'm going to just talk to the first one. Um, digital twin is a replication of physical assets, a grouping of assets, and that could be a process or say a line, a manufacturing line um, or a plant and or a virtual mode of some type of physical end-to-end -end chain to monitor. Uh, it's si to st simulate as well as well as optimize performance. I'm not gonna take you through the rest, but I do wanna point out, we're gonna to get to predictive and prescriptive in this space. 
And we're starting to do that now. And again, the panel will, will start to ch chat. Just a little grounding on if you're not familiar with, with what digital twin is in the supply chain space, I, I found this definition, the source is EY. Um, in the next couple slides, they did a good job of, of outlining this. You may hear digital twin on the clinical side. This is not that, that's a molecule and that's totally different, but the terms are used, um, they're thrown around quite a bit. In terms of why, so why do we need a control tower? Why are we um, you know, looking at these capabilities? Uh, really, the disruption that is here is probably gonna stay here. And we learned a lot during COVID. Um, rocks were exposed under a river we never knew. That river was drained and we saw a lot of rocks. So we're, we're now trying to understand and react to global shocks or shifting in customer demands or react to the balance cost optimization, um, risk mitigation and, and growth. So kind of, we, we wanna look at those and be able to react and we also wanna benefit from an ROI perspective. So we're starting um, to really realize some of these percentages and these are ranges uh, that EY came up with, but we're, we're not so much interested in the revenue growth just yet. We don't think we're there yet, uh, but, but uh, Dennis and the, the panel can talk to that further. Reduce expenses, absolutely that's a target and that's where we're, gonna, we're, we're going after and some of those numbers are, are accurate. So that's, that's things like reduce expedited logistic costs, reduce returns. For us, returns are very expensive because these are expensive um, drugs that go out. Uh, reduce fines from shipment delays, et cetera. And then planning efficiency, getting to that now. We're not totally there, but we're still, we started from that distribution and inward down to the supply, uh, raw supply area. So we're starting to look at that planning efficiency area pretty closely. And then inventory write-off, again, that's damaged goods. Products in our case that fall under temperature, they're called excursions. Um, they're, they're problems, you can't sell them, they have to take them back and they're not cheap, cheap drugs. Okay? So just trying to give you some background again in, in, in terms of getting um, some topics tabled for the panel. Love this slide. This is, this is my favorite slide because it shows the reality where we're at and we're gonna checkpoint against this with the panel. We're probably more in the functional visibility and cross-functional visibility areas. That is a little picture of a control tower, so we're, we're definitely there. But are we yet? you know, prescriptively looking at things or are, are things autonomous? Are, are they self-healing? I love that term, self-healing. We got to get there. And there's probably manufacturers or organizations out there that are starting to do this. Amazon, I'm sure, is doing it in certain regards. But, but from our perspective and a lot of other industries, I don't think we're quite there. Again, this is going to be a question for the panel to, to kind of go through. So these slides are all online. Um, but I just want to give you a feel of a timetable of when we're, you know, going to get to a fully networked ecosystem and some of the potential benefits and savings that we can see. 